I hope you're good. So this week I thought it might be interesting to look at some Daft Punk synth sounds or sounds that Daft Punk sampled uh, on the original hardware. So let's get going. So let's start with the main riff from Daft Punk. We're going to use a Korg MS-20, which I'm pretty sure is what they used on the original recording. There's a lot of synths called the Korg MS-20, but this is the original Mark 1 from 1978, which has the Type 35 filter, which is quite a distinctive feature, which I'll show you now. So this is the basic sound of the synth. Then if you push the peak, which is resonance on most synths, uh, then it starts to break up and distort in a really cool way. And then you can do the same on the high pass filter as well. You can push the peak all the way up. which is a really cool feature of this synth and why a lot of people want the original with the Type 35 filter because it gives you that saturated analog distortion, which is awesome. So let's set up the basic sound. So we're going to choose a sawtooth wave on oscillator one, a sawtooth wave on oscillator two, and now we're going to tune oscillator two up a perfect fifth. Uh, and then we're going to change the footing here. So oscillator 2, we're going to keep on 16 feet, but we're going to change oscillator 1 to 8 feet. So that gives us a perfect fourth. We've inverted a perfect fifth. And that has an inherently guitar-y sound to it. Because it's like playing the third and fourth strings on a guitar, like the... That kind of smoke on the water type thing. So that's why it has that kind of vibe to it. And the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of patching. So we've got this patch bay over here uh, and we want the keyboard control voltage out. So what does that mean? Well, on a synthesizer, the keyboard is actually a voltage divider. So on most synths, it's one volt per octave. But on this synth and some others, it's hertz per volt, which is a different scaling. But what it basically means is each note has a corresponding voltage. So in relation to an oscillator, that gives us a frequency, which is a pitch. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, etc but you can use that voltage high to low to modulate other things, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to come out of the keyboard control voltage out and stick it in the voltage controlled high pass filter cutoff frequency here on the patch bay. So what that means is the frequency of this filter, the high pass, is going to be modulated by the voltage from the keyboard. So as I play higher, it's going to move higher. And as I play lower, it's going to move lower. So if you could actually see it, it would be moving as I played, uh, but obviously it's all going on underneath the bonnet. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the signal out here and we're going to run the synth back on itself. So it has an external signal processor here, which is for running external audio through it, which is a really cool feature. Uh, and you can come out of the bandpass filter. Uh, and what that means is when you're bringing an external signal in, uh, you have controls of the filters here, but these are duplicates of these over here. But we're not bringing an external signal in, we're bringing the synth back on itself, so it's already doing its filtering up here, so we don't want to do that again. So we just come out of the VCA here, and then you set the signal level, uh, and we can push that until it starts breaking up and peaking as it'll light up here, which is what we want. So let's set up the filters. So I'm going to start with the high pass filter. I'm going to put the cutoff frequency at about one, although we can play with that when we start dialing in the sound a bit more. Uh, and then we come down the bottom. We've got two modulation sources for this filter. We've got the MG, which is the modulation generator, which is an LFO, or we've got EG2, which is envelope generator two here, which we can use to shape the filter cutoff. But that has EG2 slash external. And what that means is the system is normaled so that you have envelope generator two here. But if you override that and plug something in here, you'll get this source, which is what we've done. So we're going to get external rather than envelope generator two. 
So we'll pull that all the way up. Uh, and then let's move on to the low pass filter. So let's set up the low pass filter. So I'm going to set the frequency quite low at about three for now. Although we'll play with that as we dial in the sound, of course. And I'll push some peak up to about seven for now. And then at the bottom, we've got modulation of this filter. Uh, and we're going to dial it in at the bottom. So we've not patched anything in here. So we're going to get EG2 as per normal. So that's envelope generator two is going to modulate the cutoff of this filter. So at the moment, if I dial up the signal level, we're probably going to hear not much. I'm going to hear a low rumble. So I need to set up this envelope. So we want a little bit of delay on the attack time so that it sweeps up. So we get a kind of wow sound. Uh, so I've set that about one. And I'll set the decay time somewhere in the middle for now. Don't want any sustain, and then we want a little bit of release. Let's see what we get. Okay, kind of, but we need to do some more to this. So we've got the signal level, which will give us more and more distortion the more we push it through. <laughs> and you get those massive dive bombs. So that's a little bit too much. So we need to play with that and the modulation here, and the peak, and where the filter cutoffs are, basically, and the envelope, of course. There we go, that's starting to sound closer. Probably still a little bit too distorted. So I've fiddled around with it, and I've got it pretty much to where I think is about right, which is this. So obviously you can then fiddle around with the settings a little bit more and it's very sensitive to two tiny little changes as you can see uh, but then you could take it into your door and EQ it and compress it and do more to it so I think this would give you close enough to the sound so that you could get it exactly right in a mix. So the next thing we're going to do is the second riff from Defunk which is done on a Roland TB303 bassline so I'm going to put it on pattern group one I've got it on pattern right mode I hit pattern clear and then I'm going to press number eight that's going to clear pattern number eight it's gone so then I'm going to go to time mode and I'm just going to put in 16 steps. And then it drops out of time mode when I've got to 16. Then I'm going to go to pitch mode. And I'm going to put in the notes. So your notes are G, A sharp, G, F, D sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, D sharp, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, G, C, G come out of that back into normal mode hit play and it'll sound nothing like it and that's because we haven't done any of the accents slides or octaves so let's go back to pitch mode and then go right and next button and the first note we're going to put a down on it so it's in the lower octave next note we're going to put up next note a slide next note up Next note, accent and a slide. Next note, down and an accent. Next note, down, accent and slide. Next note, an accent. Next note, up and a slide. Next note, down. Next note, up and a slide. Next note, up, an accent and a slide. Next note, down. Next note, down and a slide. Next note, down and a slide. And next note, a slide. Let's go back to normal mode and hear what we've got. And that's basically the riff. And obviously you can then... Tweak the controls a little bit. Uh, but there's another main thing we need to do, which is uh, distort it. So back in the day, they probably would have run it through a stomp box, uh, like a Proco Rat or something. But I'm actually going to run it through the MS-20 external signal processor. So let's do that. So all those notes, accents, slides and octaves, I'm going to write all that in the description for you so you can go through it at your own pace. Uh, but let's uh, listen to what we've got now. We've run it through the external signal processor of the MS-20. 
Starting to sound closer, so let's play with the cutoff frequency and the envelope mod. Bit of decay. I think it's somewhere about there, but obviously it's a movable thing because they modulate it in the original song. Well, that's basically the second riff in Defunk. So the third synth sound we're going to do is the riff from Robot Rock, which is actually a sample of a song called Release the Beast by Breakwater. Uh, that was done on a Prophet 5. Uh, it's one of the presets on the Prophet 5, in fact. Uh, and when I played a Prophet 5, I had to try it. <laughs> I haven't got a Profit 5 here, but I have got a Sequential Circuits Pro 1, which has the same oscillators, filter and VCA as a Profit 5 Rev 3. Uh, and as we're playing a monophonic line, you can basically get exactly the same sound out of it. So this is the raw sound of a Pro 1. It's an absolute beast. If you get a chance to grab one of these, do it. Um, and now let's uh, dial in the sound. So this is a classic oscillator sync sound. I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. But basically that works as one oscillator is synced to the other. So when the master oscillator, as it were, gets to the end of its wave cycle and resets, uh, it forces the other oscillator to do the same regardless of where it is within its waveform. Uh, and if they're at the same frequency, that has no real effect, a, a tiny little effect. But when the frequencies are different or when the frequency of the synced oscillator is changing over time, it's being modulated, then it becomes really interesting and you can really hear the effect of oscillator sync. So let's set up the basic sound. So I'm going to go over to oscillator A, I'm going to turn off the sawtooth and I'm going to turn on a square wave and I'm going to keep the pulse width in the middle, about 50%. I'm going to set the octave at 1 and then I'm going to turn on sync. Uh, oscillator B, I'm going to turn off the wave shapes. So we're not going to hear oscillator B. Uh, but it's just going to be modulating oscillator A. So we hear the effect of oscillator B on oscillator A, but not oscillator B itself. So it's a little bit like an LFO, where you don't hear the LFO because it's below the range of human hearing, but you hear the effect of it. Uh, and then on the mix, we've got oscillator A all the way up, oscillator B is all the way up, but there is no oscillator B to be heard. No noise. So let's go over to the filter section. So the sound we have so far is which isn't that exciting, so we've still got a lot to do to it. So let's bring the filter cutoff down to about two. So we've got some scope to open it when we modulate it. Uh, don't want any resonance. Envelope amounts, that's how much of the filter envelope is affecting the filter cutoff. We want that about six, seven, about two thirds of the way up. Keyboard amount, that's the voltage from the keyboard, high to low. Uh, how much of the keyboard voltage is tracking the filter cutoff. Let's bring that down to about a third, something like that. We can adjust these as we go. Uh, and then the filter envelope, attack 5, decay about 7, sustain about 3, and release about 3. Uh, so we've got this. You can hear now there's a bit of whoa, whoa. And that's because we've closed the filter and then used a filter envelope shaped thusly to make it open. So let's move on to the next bit. So we're now going to set up the amp envelope. So that's just your normal ADSR. Uh, and I've got it set how I want it, which is attack 3, so there's a little lag, uh, decay 5, sustain all the way up to 10, and then no release. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back to oscillator B and just knock it up an octave, as I forgot to do that a moment ago. And then we're going to go over to the mod matrix here. So we've got three modulation sources, filter envelope, oscillator B, and the LFO, which is here. Uh, and these can be sent directly or via the mod wheel. Uh, and we want the filter envelope, which is at the top, and we want to send that directly, so we click direct. And then we want oscillator A to have its frequency modulated by the filter envelope, so we click that to direct as well. So now the frequency of oscillator A is linked to the filter envelope here, and if we dial it up, we should start hearing that classic sync sound. <laughs> Well, 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 well. 
And there you go. Okay, so we've had a little play with the filter cutoff, the envelope amount, the filter envelope, the amp envelope, and the modulation amount. Uh, and the last thing we need to do is we just need to dial in a bit of vibrato. So we've got an LFO over here. The shape is a triangle wave, uh, and we've sent that to the wheel. So if we dial that up, so you can set the frequency. So we want to make it sing. Something like that. Uh, and so let's try the riff out. And there you go, that's the basic riff for Release the Beast, which was sampled and used in Robot Rock. So that's basically it for this video. I've written all the settings I used for those synths in the description so you can work through those at your leisure. And I've also given you some alternatives to these synths if you can't find the original hardware. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.